Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to share with you how I made my first set of cards using the September 2020 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see how I made them and get a couple tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel and you're gonna be interested in downloading the free printable for yourself, make sure to go ahead and click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back, I'm so glad that you're here again. In yesterday's video, I shared a look at the very first set of cards that I made using the September 2020 sheet load of cards. This month, it is a special slimline edition. If you want to check out that video where I also tell you how to download the printable for free, I will have it linked in the description box below. In today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I made those and give you a few tips along the way. Not only will I be using some of my tried and true tools that I know I love, but I am also testing out a couple new tools today for the very first time in this video. So hopefully things go okay and I end up enjoying them. The first one is this new punch that I got from Stampin' Up. Now you know that I love my big fishtail banner punches that puts fishtails in one, one and a half inch and two inch strips. When I saw that Stampin' Up! had this one in their new catalog where it does fishtails and reverse fishtails in smaller pieces, I just had to order this. Now I am not a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, but if you don't have one already, I will link my demonstrator below if you want to check out this product. And if you have a different demonstrator or you're outside of the United States, I still hope that you'll check it out if we end up liking this. But the sizes that this punches is a half an inch, three quarters of an inch, and one inch. The second new tool that I'll be trying out today is my new Spellbinders Prism. It is a mini die cutting machine. Years ago, I bought the very first round of Sizzix Sidekicks, you know, the little mini die cutters made by Sizzix. And when I moved, I'm like, what do I need this little die cutter for? I have my cuddle bug, and I gave it away to Goodwill. Well, lately I have been wishing that I had a smaller machine to cut small dies so I don't have to pull out my big one. So this is on major sale at Spellbinders. Right now it's $14.99 and it's regularly $40. So I went ahead and ordered this and I cannot wait to try it out. Now that those are out of the way, you can look here at the newest printable and you'll see the sketch for this month. This month's sketch yields six cards with just two pieces of pattern paper and then some cardstock. Don't forget that today all of my collaborators will be joining me in sharing their sheet load of cards for the month. All of their channels and Instagram accounts and blogs are linked below so when you're done here make sure to go see what they created and leave them some love. Before I get started on the process, I'll go ahead and share with you some of the other products that I'll be using. If I add anything later, I will be sure to let you know. Speaking of adding anything, I was getting ready to tell you what I was going to stamp and emboss my sentiments with and realized that I didn't even get the stamp set out that I'm going to be using. For my sentiment today, which I will actually be stamping on this center strip, I got out my pretty pink posh everyday greeting stamp set. None of these that I'm going to use are taller than an inch and I will be adjusting that center strip just a little bit for my cards so in case any of these are wider than what is shown here. I will be stamping and embossing that with Versamark ink and detail white embossing powder and I will be doing a little bit of an embellishing up here in the image or sentiment area with these butterfly dies from Spellbinders. This is an old set that is no longer available, but I bet you can find something similar. I have a solid butterfly here and then a more detailed outline. For my papers, I will be using some vellum for the die cutting for the detail butterfly. For CS2, I got out this gray cardstock. This will be the maroon cardstock that you see here on the printable. 
And then for my card bases and my imager sentiment area, I just got out some heavyweight white cardstock. I did already pre-choose my pattern papers. These are from a Michaels Hot Buy paper pad. And later on in the video, I'll show you that in case you want to go look for it. But I will be using two of these and cutting them per the cutting guide here. That is the butterfly paper and this kind of floral detailed green piece. I also grabbed out this blue and white pattern paper and I will be die cutting my solid butterflies out of this. Once I start the process, I will go to a voiceover. So make sure that if I leave you with any questions to so leave those in the comment section below. Let's get crafty. I started my cutting today by cutting down the CS1 pieces. This will end up being my card base and the area for my image slash sentiment. I cut this to seven inches wide, and then the other smaller piece gets cut to three and a quarter by two and a quarter. That larger piece then will get folded in half to be a three and a half by eight and a half inch slim line card base. I do this with all six pieces. Next, I got out two pieces of gray cardstock that I will be cutting as CS2. Now mine will be a little bit different. I will cut the larger pieces first and then those strips at the bottom, instead of cutting them to two and a half inches wide, I cut mine a little bit wider and you'll see that here in just a second. I just kept cutting until I had six pieces of piece A. Then I got out my gray strips and I cut mine to three and a half inches wide because I will be punching the ends with the Stampin' Up! punch and it takes a little of the length off. So you'll see that once I have those ends punched, I held it up to a card base and I liked the way that that fit across it. So then I just continued to cut those strips at the bottom until I had six pieces that were three and a half inches wide. Next, it was time to cut the pattern papers. I decided to stack both of my patterns together and then I cut them per the dimensions on the printable. Don't forget that as you're watching my process today, you don't have to worry too much about the dimensions. Those are all given on that free printable that you can download in yesterday's video. Once I was done cutting these, I did have all of the main pieces of the cards cut. But while I still had out my trimmer, I cut some strips of the final pattern paper and the vellum down so it would fit on the die cutter. I cut these to two and a half inches until I thought I had enough to cover all of the die cutting I would need. Now I know I said earlier that I wanted to avoid getting out my big cuddle bug since I had the new prism, but I wanted to add some embossing to those small white cardstock pieces. So I did have to pull out my cuddle bug quickly so I could put some texture on each of those. Now it's time for the prism. If you'll notice, it has the lever on front there. Now, because of the texture of my desktop where I craft, it doesn't really help it stay down. But I will tell you that upstairs on my kitchen table, when we put that lever down, we could not pry that off the table. So it does work, but you'll see here that I do have to hold it down while I die cut. I ran through my first butterfly with the vellum and after I had cut that I realized that I cut the wrong die on the vellum. I actually needed to cut the detail one, but it did cut it beautifully. Now speaking of beautifully, when I ran my detailed die through for the first time, it did not cut all the way through. So I played with the settings a little bit off camera and I discovered that if I put just a small piece of cardstock underneath the die that it cut nicely. Now I won't ding the prism too much for this because I know with other die cutters sometimes you do need that little extra layer if it's a real detailed die. So I ran those through until I had six detailed butterflies.
Once all of the vellum was cut, I then cut that background butterfly out of the pattern paper and it did cut very nicely with just that one layer of pattern paper. I did not need that extra shim for this piece. I continued to cut until I had six of the pattern paper butterflies as well. To put the butterflies together, I got out my art glitter glue and you know that I love my stopper at the top. I will link the video below where I bought my stopper from if you want to go check it out. I added a little glue to the center of each of the vellum butterflies and then I put that onto the pattern paper backer. This then got set underneath a stamp block and once I had these all together, I let them dry for about five minutes. While those were drying, I got back out my Stampin' Up! punch and I put the fishtail ends in both sides of my gray pieces. Sometimes it did get stuck a little bit and I needed to turn it over to see where it was punching, but I did successfully get the ends in those. It was very handy to use. Now it's time to do the stamping. I will be using six different sentiments from the stamp set along with the Versamark ink, white detail embossing powder, and of course my embossing buddy. I chose my first stamp, which says, you are amazing. I ran my embossing buddy over one of the gray tags, just so the powder only sticks to where I want it to. Then I inked up that stamp, centered it as best as I could onto my sentiment strip, and poured some white embossing powder over it. Once I tapped off the excess and removed a little stray white powder, I brought in my heat tool to set the embossing powder. Again, this is one of my favorite things. I changed my sentiment for the next tag. This one says sending lots of love and I did the same process. I inked it up after I used my embossing buddy, of course, poured on the powder and then heat set it with my heat tool. I continued this same process until I had a total of six sentiment strips for my cards. Now that all of the pieces are ready, it's time to start putting the cards together. The first thing I do is put adhesive on the back of pattern paper piece A, and then this gets put on the front of the slimline card base. Once that is in place, I add adhesive to the back of CS2A, or the long skinny gray cardstock, and that gets centered right over the piece I just placed. Now I'm going to place the smaller pieces. The white cardstock goes at the top with an even border on the top left and right, and then the smaller pattern paper piece goes at the bottom with that same border at the bottom left and right. You'll notice there is a gap between these two pieces, but that will be covered up by the sentiment strip. I want to add just a little bit of dimension on this card, so I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the 3 quarter inch width, and I added a strip to the back of that. After I pulled the release paper, I then just adhered that over the gap between the two smaller pieces. Now this is a place where you could adjust this higher or lower to fit your needs as long as that gap is covered. To add my butterflies to the card, I'm going to be using foam as well, but I just got out my dimensional for these and added a few to the back and then got it adhered to the card front. Once that first card was completed, just so I could show you one quickly that was finished, I then went to more of an assembly line process. I added all of my foam tape to the back of my sentiment blocks, and then I moved on to the card pieces. The first thing I did was add the smaller pieces to all of the skinny gray cardstock strips, and then once I had all of those on there, I moved on to placing these onto the pattern paper backgrounds. Next time you make a sheet load, if you don't already, go ahead and try this assembly line process. I do think it cuts down the time to put a sheet load together. Once those card front pieces were ready, I then placed each of them onto the pre-folded slimline card bases.
And then finally, I added all of the sentiment strips, followed by each of the layered butterflies. Now, I could have stopped here and called the cards good, but you know that I don't think any card is finished until there's a little sparkle or shine. So I brought in my Elizabeth Craft Designs clear and silver glitter dots. I placed three of these down the center of the butterfly where the body would be, and these also helped cover up some adhesive that you could see through the vellum. Then I added two more on the card front, and here's a close-up look. I continued to add the glitter dots until all six cards were embellished. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made my first set of cards using the September 2020 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go visit all of my collaborators. Their links are all in the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.